Okay. Dear siblings in Christ, enduring love, endless mercy, and abundant grace are yours this day and all days. From God the Father, who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. From Jesus Christ the Son, who goes before you to prepare your place in the heavenly kingdom. And from the Holy Spirit, in whom you've been baptized and ordained a royal priesthood. Amen. People of St. Andrew Lutheran Church, good morning and God's blessing to you this fifth Sunday of Easter. Thank you so much for your welcome and hospitality in inviting me to be here to worship with you today. As Pastor Laurie said, my name is Jamie Lennon and I have the great and very humbling pleasure of serving you in your partnership with Lutheran World Relief as a congregational engagement manager. But what exactly does that mean? Well, part of my role is this visiting with congregations and inspirational ministry partners like St. Andrews to share the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I also come to express gratitude for your caring kindness and update you on how your love and compassion reaches our neighbors to transform lives. But let me first say this, start by saying this, thank you, Lutheran World Relief exists because you have stepped out in faith to be a royal priesthood that cares for our global neighbor. Thank you, and God bless you. In today's lesson taken from Peter's first epistle, we hear a commissioning to the early church to whom he is addressing. It is a church scattered geographically and perhaps spiritually also. In that regard, maybe it is not much different than the church today. Indeed, Peter's instruction to the early church certainly applies to us that we ought to be priests to one another and to proclaim the mighty acts of him who called called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. In worship today, we will confess and proclaim that faith and give thanks for our salvation. But what about that first part? What does it mean to be priests to one another? Let's take a look at Martin Luther's take. In reflecting on this lesson, or rather this epistle, Luther would develop what became to be known as his doctrine of the universal priesthood of all believers. Writing in his address to the Christian nobility of the German nation, Luther argues against the notion of a special priestly class. Instead, Luther develops develops a theology that dismantles the mediatory model of priesthood, essentially arguing against the need for priests to intercede in our relationship with Christ and with God thus freeing each Christian to access God through their relationship with Christ as found in Scripture and in the preaching of the gospel, which is set aside as the primary role of the ordained clergy. For Luther, the priesthood of all believers requires of all believers to be priests to one another, or as he put it, little Christs to the neighbor. This last week, and especially these last two days, I have bore witness to how you and many other congregations throughout Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and beyond put this doctrine into practice to become little Christs to our global neighbor by stitching quilts, collecting personal hygiene kits, baby care kits, and school kits, and bringing them together here in your parking lot before having them first sent to the other side of the country to be processed at the Lutheran World Relief Warehouse in New Windsor, Maryland, before they are then shipped to various places throughout the world, blessing each recipient in your faith and God's love. Thanks to the little Christs that shine in each of you for that ministry. If you are in doubt, any doubt about the impact of these quilts or the care kits or what they can have, the impact they can have on our neighbor, please allow me to share a couple of stories, starting, and get it to work, with this video. Oh, I went too far, didn't I? Ah, And that's my wife. (laughs) Paul, I might need some help. Um, If I can, I don't think I can get back to it. Stop. 
Stunting is a condition caused by chronic malnutrition in early years of child's development. And uh, it's quite actually prevalent in Tanzania. Stunted children are most likely to get sick. They take longer to recover because they have compromised immune system. They have developmental delays and um, they have difficulty learning. When we, I hear that the, such a big number of children are stunted, understanding the effects of the long-term effects of stunting, it's really painful because it is also related to inability of, of children to develop to their potential mentally. One important uh, uh, study was done by Ifakara Health Institute in 2020, and they looked into drivers of stunting in Jomba region uh, beyond uh, nutritional intake. Jomba is one of the coldest areas in Tanzania. It's mountainous region. And during the home visits, they observed that children often sit on a cold floor and with very little or no clothes on, and uh, concluded that um, children, instead of using the food intake energy to grow, they were using that energy to keep their body warm. So that was contributing to stunting. When we heard about the study, we immediately thought about Lutheran World Rules Growth Program. And we thought how this could help us keep those kids warm in Jombe. The food came to the very appropriate time because it's a cold condition. They have really touched the, the, the life at in the very appropriate time. We were able to mobilize support and bring quilts to Tanzania and we're expecting one more shipment and we hope to reach close to 9,000 children with this assistance. Thank you so much for whoever thought of these children and sent the gift. Thank you to quilters on the other side of the globe for all the great work and dedication and for bringing words of their hearts to children of Tanzania. It's very important. Thank you so much, Asante San. So that video is uh, hot off the press. It actually, um, we just got it finished on Friday. Um, but I've heard this story for the last 12 months or so that I've been engaged with Lutheran World Relief, and it blows my mind every time um, that those quilts um, are having an impact in fighting uh, a very real problem uh, in terms of stunting uh, of the children in, in Tanzania. So we know the physical impact that quilts can have, but they have a spiritual impact uh, as well. Uh, and just to highlight that, I want to talk a little bit about this lady here. Her name is Nadia Agrakova. She is one of the recipients uh, of a quilt and a personal care kit uh, and that was given to her in Lviv uh, Oblast in Ukraine last year, uh, and when she received it, she said uh, that she could not believe uh, that folks pray over those quilts, uh, that they take the time to hand stitch them, and she was blown away by this and actually uh, uh, drawn to tears. Uh, and our colleague, Marina, uh, who was with her, who's also Ukrainian herself, uh, said that the Ukrainian people uh, are not prone uh, to that level of emotion uh, and what that, that, uh, that emotion uh, said to Marina is that it is all the more revelatory of your love that she needed to know, um, Nadia needed to know that someone somewhere cared enough, cared enough to reach out in love as little Christs, cared enough to reach out in love to extend uh, a hand and hope. So thank you also for that. Similarly, during a school kit distribution back in Tanzania last year, parents rejoiced as their young children received the gift of school supplies. Surrounding the students, parents danced as they sang a song entitled Nima Ye Yesu, which in Swahili means the grace of Jesus. Again, imagine school kits that have been assembled here at St. Andrew, reaching our neighbors throughout the world. They have been indeed blessed by your faith. And as the parents so beautifully put it, that blessing is the grace of Jesus. These are no isolated cases, and the power that lies in a quilt or a personal care kit is immeasurable. They provide warmth, foster healing, and growth, and instill hope. Now I want you to close your eyes. 
and hold in your mind the image of the children in Tanzania who through your quilts have another tool in a fight against stunting. Hold also the image of Nadia and the hope your faith blesses her with. Now I want you to visualize and think about the 10,000 plus pounds of quilts and kits that fill up the container in the parking lot. The 10,000 pounds plus of blessings that sit just behind me here, ready to reach neighbors like those children featured in the video or neighbors like Nadia throughout the world. This is how you are a priesthood, reaching out to say, I love you and so does Jesus. You can open your eyes. As these stories attest, we have been able to do some great work together, but that work is far from over. As the events in Allen, Texas yesterday remind us, and certainly our prayers go out to that community, we stand in a deeply fractured and sadly continuously further fractured world in desperate need of healing. Dare I say, in desperate need of repentance. Events and crises of the last few years have only served to deepen that fracturing. And the needs in places from Turkey to Yemen to Peru are immense. Natural disasters, crippling drought and famine, divisive and violent political insecurity, and the lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic have converged to result in increasing food prices around the globe. The war in Ukraine has compounded the crisis, pushing vulnerable communities further into dangerous cycles of hunger and suffering. In fact, an article in the New Humanitarian earlier this year suggested the number of people who will need to rely on some form of humanitarian aid in 2023 will increase by 25% to over 339 million people. Or to put that another way, roughly the equivalent of the population of the United States. And I should note that this article was written before war broke out in Sudan and before the earthquake in Turkey, both of which have thrust even more families into crisis. In order to be able to respond to these crises, we know it will take an effort bigger than any of us. It will take all of us from across the world in an act of global discipleship to come together and respond in faith and love. The challenge of ending poverty and global suffering seems impossible, but we confess with the biblical author of Genesis that all things are possible with God. So take heart. I take heart also in today's lesson from Peter and know that we have been stitched together by Christ to be little Christs to each other. And yes, I take heart from you, the people of St. Andrew's Lutheran Church, Thank you for being a living testimony of Christ's word. May God bless you. Amen.